You couldn't have possibly thought I was done talking about Lupin the Third. It's a 50 year long franchise and perhaps one of my favorite things we've created as a species. Last time we examined the castle of Cagliostro, and today I want to talk about the mystery of Mama, which came out a year before and was the series' first feature. <laughs> You see, the animation director on this movie, Yasuo Otsuka, was one of the pioneers of an animation technique still used today, limited animation. To put it simply, limited animation is essentially when artists draw as few unique drawings from frame to frame as possible, usually to squeeze out efficiency in production schedule and budgeting. Trust me, if you've ever watched anime, you've seen limited animation before. It's why anime usually moves at 12 frames per second and why it's so static in how characters are blocked. Notice just how little movement and unique poses there are in this shot, and the way the mouth simply opens and closes instead of moving with the exact words being said. That's limited animation. For contrast, let's take a look at this shot from Aladdin. It's buttery smooth, and there's a new drawing every single frame. This is full animation, at 24 frames per second. Peter Chung, a Korean-American animator who worked at Disney, says that it's a mortal sin in Disney-style classical animation to make your audience think that they're looking at a drawing. You're trying to hide the fact that the characters are made of drawings at all times. However, there is a simultaneous lack of real direction and experimentation with the visual style across their films because those just aren't the focus. Comparatively, let's hop over to Japan and see what the limited animation of Mamo has to offer. See, limited animation is interesting because, very significantly, it forces directors to get creative with their cinematography. Not doing so results in a very boring look. It's why we say some older anime has aged terribly. There's a concurrent lack of unique style and fluidity, which kills the visual intrigue when it's not on purpose. Mamo, however, offers some of the best direction and use of limited animation I've ever seen. Let's first take a look at a specific moment to examine the craft in a perfectly limited shot. You little! I'll be writing rest in peace on your tombstone when I'm done with you! The shot is quite short, frankly, at only 3 seconds and 7 frames, but there's a lot going on here that I think is worth breaking down. Note here that there are three primary layers composing Zenigata. His body without his jacket, his jacket, and his head. His body is static, but you probably didn't notice because his jacket is moving on a loop consisting of three different positions. This simulates the effect of wind, creating a tangible environment that keeps the setting and moment in the real world and prevents the image from getting stale. On top of that, his head is moving while he talks, but only within three distinct drawings. You get that he's talking, but his lips don't really need to conform to his words. On top of that, and this is my favorite part, lightning periodically strikes the shot, changing the whole palette and adding a dramatic shadow. Notice, however, that the line art is still the same, it's just the colors on top that change. The storm also adds to the atmosphere of the scene and, once again, keeps the shot from being stale. So with just six different drawings and two color palettes, you get a shot like this, and you probably would never notice how simple it is. Comparatively, given the length of the shot, a Disney production would have taken 79 drawings. But let's also take a look at how limiting the animation lets the film be bold with its shot choices and how it affects the overall look of the film. Later in Mamo's story, Lupin, Jigen, and Goemon find themselves walking on foot to the Atlantic Ocean. Here's how it looks. Note that they hold on one single frame for three and a half seconds, and then followed up with two equally as impactful and strong stills for a total of roughly 14 seconds. This demonstrates another advantage to limited animation. Having to draw less frames means that each one can be more detailed and expressive. These shots are absolutely terrific. The first is a high contrast and vibrant shot, making it a striking image, and having the sun frame our characters immediately conveys how incredibly hot the desert is. There's a slight warp on the film to push the heat even further. The next shot essentially takes everything about the first, but cuts in closer to show just how exhausted and hot our characters feel. The final works by using a slow pan across one big, finely detailed image to show the vast emptiness of the desert they have to cross. It's only three drawings, yet each one is finely polished and stylistic. And yet, there's still more we can pull out of the film's direction. 
with the way it plays with its camera to do certain shots. For one, it racks focus. This is a technique so rarely used in Western animation that I don't think many people even know it's possible. It adds so much to the cinematic presentation of the film and yet you never see it elsewhere. Another instance of the strong stylization that characterizes Mamo comes with the scans of actual drawings and art in it, with the creme de la creme being this shot of Lupin running through Dali's The Persistence of Memory. And perhaps my favorite example is when Goemon cuts a man's head into three pieces, and they cut the actual frame into three pieces and shifted them around to give a point of view okay? shot. That remains perhaps one of my favorite shots of all time, not just in the Lupin franchise, not just in anime or animation, but in any film ever. Because literally who and what else is giving that? With this film, we have an example of the power of limited animation. It allows them to get away with doing less drawings but still creating the impact they want, it allows them to create more finely detailed art, and it allows for way more impactful and interesting stylization and visual tricks across the entire film. Otsuka and the animation staff's work on The Mystery of Mamo makes it, even apart from just this limited animation, one of the most visually engaging movies I've ever seen, and the story is about as good. It's an eventual must-watch for animation fans and an all-time favorite of mine, so please check it out. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. If there's any other animation films you want me to talk about or any other animation techniques, I'd absolutely love to talk about those in a future video, so drop them down in the comment section down below. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like, and if you loved it, consider subscribing. That's gonna be all for today, guys. Brandon Recorders, peace out, and make sure to take care of yourself. What do you say? Uh -huh. Let's get out of here. It's